lift machinery before the computer generation is quite fascinating. Using animations and my attention to detail, this video goes through how it all works. In fact, it's taken me two months to put this video together. Coming up, a look at the mechanical logic and the relays, including their functions. The lift motors, the express lifts floor positioning system, an animation of the vane system and how that works, and more after the intro. These lifts were installed by the Express Lift Company back in 1968. Today we are here with a lift engineer. Previously, we had a look at the lifts and the lift shaft. To see part one, please click the link at the top or see the video description. If you've not seen my channel before, then I'm passionate about editing my videos to be as interesting as possible. And this is why they take so long to edit. I do hope you enjoy watching. We're currently in the basement and going underneath the old duplex lifts shown earlier. Duplex means the lifts work together to answer calls. Essentially, they are linked. This is quite easy with computer programming, but as this system was installed in the late 1960s, everything is done mechanically. As this is a basement drive system, the ropes go around the sheave, which is the big drive wheel at the back. This connects to a gearbox, then a brake, and connects back to the motor via belts. The ropes go through the floor, then all the way up to the top of the shaft. Then they're diverted back down, one side to the lift car, and the other to the counterweight. These ropes are from the sheave in the basement. The motor is two speed, and you'll see in a moment two electrical boxes on the side of it, which is where the controller terminates to the motor high speed and low speed windings. In a moment, I'll go through most of the cabinet, but before that, my favourite part of any old lift, the floor selector. I'll explain how it works. This is a different lift and it's one speed. As the lift moves, plates that are fixed to the lift shaft swipe through a reader on top of the lift. Just in case you didn't see them, I've highlighted the rest in yellow. The plates are called vanes and activate solenoids in the motor room. These solenoids turn a platform. That push switches that are wired to the floor indicators and stopping logic. If a call is present on the floor that the lift is approaching, then the first vein triggers a stop. A one-speed lift, like this example, relies on the brake to bring the lift to a complete stop. The duplex lifts are two-speed. For two-speed lifts, you need more than one inductor on the car top. And these use three of them. Looking upwards, you can see the remaining vanes for the floor above. So for a single-speed lift, the brake does all the work. For two-speed lifts, things are different. Firstly, the floor selector now changes when the lift is between floors, not at the floor. Secondly, we need more tracks, vanes and inductors. 
the stopping position is more precise. And these vanes are responsible for that. But this only works when the lift has switched to slow speed. These vanes switch the lift from high speed to low speed before the lift reaches the stopping vanes. So here is the express lift system in action. The vanes on the first and second tracks are completely ignored until the lift finds an active call. This activates relay 80, stopping relay. The slowdown vane activates relay 46, which switches the lift to slow speed. At the overlap point, the lift is brought to a stop. The relays that activate and deactivate really need a little more explanation, perhaps in a future video. You can see them working in slow motion in the video shown here. Please click the link above or see the video description to see it. But even for a two-speed lift, it's the brake that finally brings the lift to a complete stop. Now an introduction to the logic system. At the top is a graphical representation of the relays the lift engineer is pressing. These are the landing call relays. The lift engineer is essentially pressing them from the cabinet instead of on the floors. Where it is. It won't take you that call. Like that one will. Okay, why so is that? It must know what's the closest lift. I see. So even though I'm forcing the lift, the call in there, it's just out itself that that one is closer to that floor. Even with all this old logic, <laughs> it's up. Uh... So you put in a landing call on that one? Yeah. But it wouldn't accept it because this one's closer. It, yeah, so why it doesn't send it from that panel either, I don't know. But it's so, a call in here, it picks it up and it drops that call out. So when you press the call button, it basically activates the landing calls on both in both panels. See, I can do all that. Yeah. It's not doing nothing. Let's see. It works out itself. Oh, I don't actually understand all of this because we haven't got a true set of drawings for any of the yeah. lifts up here. We've got all. So stuff. the lift engineer was pressing the call relays for each lift, but these do not link directly to the buttons on the landings. There are more relays that you've not seen yet. In the corner of one of the cabinets, you'll find these relays that are wired directly to the landing call buttons. Here's how it works: if you press a down call on the third floor, for example. This activates relay 4 down, or 4D as labelled on the relay. Relay 4D then activates the third floor down call relays for both lift controllers. The logic system then decides which lift will answer the call. The other lift ignores it. The lift that arrives at the call then cancels the relays for both lifts. Having duplicate landing call relays in both cabinets means that if lift 1 goes out of service, or even powers off for some reason, lift 2 takes over and has the same call information as lift 1. Now the express relays terminology. The main landing call relays are the UD relays, and these activate the 200 or 300 range of relays in both lifts. 200 are for up calls, 300 are for down calls. So for example, the lowest level up call is 201, and the highest level down call is 305 in this example. There is no separate cabinet for the UD relays. These are found in the corner of the first lift control cabinet. I will be coming back to the logic system in more detail in a separate video, as there is a lot more to discuss than just saying, the nearest lift answers the call. We now have a look around the cabinet. With help from Pete Lomas, 
I've labelled every single relay with its function. I've included a brief period where you can pause the video if you want to, to read everything properly. The F and G relays. These activate each time the floor selector pulses in, then out of a floor. The G relays represent the lift's actual position. When the lift is traveling, the circuitry needs to know in advance whether the lift is stopping or not at the next level, and the G relays do not provide enough notice. This is where the F relays play their part. The F relays step ahead of where the lift car is. If the F relay finds a call on the next landing, relay 80 is activated, which initiates the stop ahead of reaching the floor. You may remember when I mentioned features in part 1. With relay controlled lifts, any features that the manufacturer builds into the design can be switched on and off here at the bottom of the cabinet. But there are no switches and definitely no keypads with computer programming menus. Each one of these blocks has six plates as demonstrated here, with a soldering terminal at the front and rear. Each plate has a wire at the back that connects to one of the hundreds of circuits in the cabinet above. This gives engineers access to various features at the bottom of the cabinet. Joining two of these tabs together by soldering a link at the front completes a circuit. But in a lot of cases, the links are already in place as default and must be cut to select a feature. Without a guide, this is just an array of meaningless terminals. Here is a better view from the side. The lifts in this video have a couple of features enabled. Firstly, an inactive lift is set to return and park on the ground floor where everyone enters the building. But the building entry is not necessarily the lowest floor, especially when a building has a basement. Selecting the parking floor is also another option that is selected down here somewhere. Now this is a complete guess, but perhaps the parking floor is selected, or rather linked, by a wire over here. A dash pot is an overload device. It's quite simple in operation, but I think it deserves an animation and a separate video to show you how it works, as it's quite an interesting device. Please check the video description to see it.
Eva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a low of old stuff on The video you've just been watching would not have been possible without the work of Lift Tracker. Like me, Lift Tracker goes out of his way to bring you some really unique and interesting content. Please visit Lift Tracker by clicking the link in the top right at the end of the video. I spend a lot of time and effort editing these videos. Quality, not quantity, is our motto. If you've enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing to the Mr. Matt and Mr. J channel. And thank you very much for watching.